Hello and welcome to AR on AR. I'm Adam Rose and today I'm going to be looking at an area that is, I would argue, the most neglected part or skill in adventure racing, which is transitions. When you change from one discipline to another and you come in, change your gear, change your equipment and head off on the next stage. As I say, one of the most neglected areas and something that really could drastically improve your efficiency and then your overall speed in the race. Okay, so starting off with the first one, practice your transitions. We see this in triathlon all the time, you know, changing disciplines. Uh, triathletes will spend a huge amount of time getting everything ordered just the way they need it to be so that they can spend the least amount of time in transition that they can in order to get onto the next stage as fast as possible. So adopt the same mentality in adventure racing and practice your transitions. And make sure you're practicing specific discipline transitions. So getting onto the bike, getting off the bike packing your bike away, assembling your bike. Whatever's going to improve your skills, the gear that you take, making it automatic. You know, if I'm on a rope stage, I know I'm going to be needing this, this, the harness, I need the helmet, I need the carabiners, I need the, the Via Ferrata kit. Just practice all of those things and it will benefit you hugely in the long run. Know what you're going to be doing before you reach transition and agree this with your teammates. So when I'm racing with my team, we will be talking about this maybe five, 10 minutes before we hit transition. We're literally saying, okay, Andy, what are you gonna be doing? Ross, what are you gonna be doing? Pete, what are you gonna be doing? Um, so we'll be bouncing off each other, reminding each other, and especially, you know, with some stages, you might have to take specific kits on the next stage. So it's not simply every single time you're gonna be doing the same thing. For specific stages, you need to be reminded, hey, don't forget X, Y, Z. So what you're not doing is having a discussion in transition. You've had your discussion before you reached it, and that way, all you need to do when you get into transition is make it happen. Okay, have an organized gearbox. It can make a huge difference to efficiency. A lot of teams believe in having everything, everything neatly organized and laid out, but after a few transitions, you'll you look at the gearbox, it's a dog's mess. So one of the ways you could make things uh, efficient is packing all the appropriate items into different uh, Ziploc bags, so everything's neat and tidy that way, or getting cardboard or plastic dividers and just you know create them out of spare cardboard boxes and so you just divide everything up and then when you're taking things out and putting things back you know they know which slot uh, they're supposed to go in what you don't want to be doing is like scrabbling through this mess that's occurred and trying to find a little bit of kit that you're ready to take on the next stage in that regard when it comes to food food should be pre-packed you know in our case we, we tend to use uh, ziploc bags and you know you've organized your food before the race of course so you know for each stage what you're going to be needing and so with the Ziploc bags, we also have numbers. So if I'm coming off stage five and I hit transition, I take out of my backpack the bag with all the food from stage five, just take the whole thing out, dump it in transition, pick up bag six, I can see the number, put into my backpack, very modular style, and off I go, knowing I've got everything I need. Obviously not trying to pick bits and pieces together in the transition, you never want to do that. So if you've been efficient in your organization before the race, it'll really, really help how quickly and or peace of mind that you've got everything you need for the next stage. Have a specific sequence of events that you follow when you enter transition. It's not always going to be identical in every transition, but there are going to be certain things that you want to do every time. So in my case, what I tend to do is take off my shoes and socks and give my feet a chance to air out and to recover. And it may not uh, seem like much, you know, I've got my, my shoes and socks off for half an hour. But if you have 10 transitions and you multiply that by half an hour, that's five hours that my feet have had a chance to recover. And by the end of the race, that'll make a huge difference in, in uh, how my feet have coped with whatever punishment they've been given. Okay, so cumulatively, it'll make a big difference. In the individual transition, you probably wouldn't notice it. But definitely, that pays dividends. Okay, and then in terms of looking off your feet, I recommend you have a pair of flip-flops or Crocs. They're very lightweight. They're not going to be a burden, you know, uh, when you come to the race. They're not going to weigh anything, really. But you leave them in the gearbox, and that way, when you've removed your socks and shoes, and then you're running around the, the TA, picking up equipment, assembling your bike and everything, there's no chance of getting foot injury uh, while you're letting your feet air out. You don't want to step on any glass or thorns or stub your toes or something. So it's really worthwhile having something to protect your feet, but at the same time, your feet can air out. Okay, in terms of uh, kayaks, inflatable kayaks uh, or canoes, something I learned by watching Team Seagate, as they were called then, now Team Avaya, 
was if you come into a stage where the next stage is on that inflatable kayak, you know, you're never going to have that inflated for you. So each team has to pump up their own kayaks. Pump them up at the very beginning of transition. Then get on with eating, changing your clothes, getting all the gear. And that way, when you go down to the water to jump into your canoe or kayak, if it's got any punctures, especially in the floor, you'll be able to ascertain that it's got a puncture. You know, obviously you can see it's deflated. What you don't want to do is get all your kit ready, go down to the water, pump up the canoe, and then head out maybe halfway out over a lake, suddenly discover that you're sinking. So you've lost time, you've got to return to the shore, probably all wet. I've seen this happen to teams of all levels, even front runners, and suddenly there's a huge hole in their race plan because they forgot to pump it up at the beginning of the TA. Okay, really, really practical tip. When it comes to meal preparation, as you probably know, some transitions will have hot water available. So it's a good time to have a dehydrated meal, you know, zip it open, drop the water in, 10 minutes later you've got a hot meal. Again, do that as soon as you can. Maybe you allocate that task to a specific team member. That person goes off, makes all the meals, gets them ready, gets them sealed, and you put them to one side. Then the rest of the team's getting on, getting all the kit ready, getting their clothes, assembling the bike. Meaning, when they've finished all that, they can turn around, pick up the meal, and eat straight away. You're not only then starting to assemble the meal. So let that be de uh, rehydrating on the side while you get everything ready. And in fact, if you really are fast for the next stage, especially if the next stage is a trekking stage, you could pick up that rehydrated meal and start eating as you head off on the next stage, rather than waiting around to eat it before you start trekking. So save time, save time. Always got to be thinking. The clock is ticking. Do everything that you can to minimize the amount of time you're going to spend in transition. Okay, when it comes to bikes, it's a good idea to assemble or disassemble your bike towards the beginning of the transition. And that way you've got time to discover if anything's broken or anything's missing. What you don't want to do, again, is you know, prepare all your, your clothes and your kit and everything and maybe have a meal. Then go to assemble your bike for the biking stage that's coming up and then discover that the derailleur is broken. And you suddenly have to resource it from maybe hopefully from another team. That's going to take time. So the earlier you assemble or disassemble your bike, the sooner you will discover that there's an issue and you can start to set plans underway to deal with that issue rather than discover it at the last minute when everybody's amping to get onto the next stage. Okay, this one is, is pretty similar to what happens in an aeroplane. When you look at those emergency cards in an aeroplane, one of the things they say is deal with your oxygen mask first before you deal with anybody else's oxygen mask. So with a similar mentality in adventure racing, when you get it tr into transition, deal with all your own stuff first. Get that sorted as quickly as possible. And that way, the team members, I mean, nobody's going to, it's very, very unlikely everybody's going to finish it at exactly the same time. So everybody who finishes early, if I finish really quickly, I can then assist my teammates in getting all their tasks accomplished as well. Okay, and that's going to maximize efficiency, obviously. What you don't want to do is have somebody finish their transition really quickly, and then you see them standing or sitting on the side like, you know, why is everybody so slow? That is not teamwork. That's not helping anybody. So you always got to be busy, get your stuff sorted, then get on and help uh, your teammates to finish up their tasks as well. In terms of the communication that happens in transition, I've already said, you know, when you come into transition, you should already know what you have to do. But while you're in transition, communicate with the rest of your team. So you're getting your stuff assembled. You could be shouting out, have you all got your climbing kit? Have you all got your helmet? And it, that kind of communication is... To the point, it's abrupt, it's efficient, no time wasted. What you should not be doing is chatting in transition. You know, you've got the rest of the race, every single stage, how many countless hours on the stage is to do your chatting and your talking and all that other kind of nattering on. During transition, don't waste time on unnecessary chit-chat. Get it sorted. And then head out on the stage, and then you can tell everybody about all the stuff you just witnessed. Okay, so... Communication should be simply about the transition and getting it sorted. It's a good idea to allocate specific responsibilities to certain team members. So just like I, I talked about with the uh, meal preparation, you know, maybe Frank is the person who always deals with the meal preparation. And Sarah over there always deals with uh, uh, refilling the water bottles. And that's going to maximize efficiency because we don't have everybody having to deal with every task that needs to be done. And... As you know, the navigator, for example, has to deal with navigation and they might be plotting a map. So, you know, they're going to deal with that and each person deals with a specific area and that gives me assurance or confidence that it's being done. When it comes to maps, as you probably know, on some adventure races, you don't get the maps at the very beginning of the race. You get maps at specific transitions. So if you come into a transition and new maps have been issued, 
The navigator has a primary responsibility of plotting the route for the next stage. So when that happens, the rest of the team, the other three teammates in this case, should take up the slack and do all the chores that that navigator would normally do. And so that way the navigator has got the maximum amount of time to get the head in the map, get the route sorted. The other three do all the, the meal preparation and all the clothes and the bike, put the bike away and all that kind of stuff for the navigator. And that way it's overall going to achieve a much faster time of transition. What you don't want is three team members who are not navigating, having their meals, you know, sleeping in the sleeping bag, having a great transition. The navigator's got to do all the regular stuff and then get on to the map preparation. And what can happen quite often is the navigator then, let's just say it's a long transition, three, four hours, mandatory rest stop. Three teammates have had a sleep, they refreshed, the navigator spent the same three hours prepping those maps in addition to what they had to do at the beginning. So uh, prioritize the navigational task and everybody else works around that. When it comes to looking after the feet, another thing I like to do is every transition I like to at least re-grease my feet with whatever emollient I'm using or even change socks. Now, I probably wouldn't do that every transition, but the re-greasing, yes, and that way, foot care, foot care, foot care, it's primary in adventure racing. As you probably heard before, if your feet go, your race is probably over. So look after your feet at every opportunity that you can. Okay, when it comes to sleeping, there are no hard and fast rules, but there are some ideas that you can take away with this. So transition is often a good place to sleep in some sense because it's likely to be dry, you're likely to be able to have a hot meal, get in your sleeping bag, be warm, comfortable, and you might have just come off a stage where you're feeling shattered. So when would I, you know, should I sleep in transition? I would say it's a good idea if the transition is pretty much empty. It's quiet. So you can, as a team, go into the corner, bundle up in the sleeping bag, get a good amount of rest. The other side of the coin is if it's a busy transition and there are lots of teams coming in and out, uh, a lot of noise, a lot of, a lot of disturbance, then obviously it's a bad time to, to sleep in transition because your sleep is going to be interrupted, you're going to be, uh, not have good quality of sleep basically. Um, we saw in Eco Challenge that it was mandatory to take rest at transitions. Now if that happens, yeah you can, you can sleep there, well you obviously have to, but then I would compensate by potentially the team getting up, moving 100 meters away or so, so they're still at the transition, setting up the tent, so they're not in the building with all the other teams, setting up the tent, getting the sleeping bag, and getting quality sleep there. Even though they're spending time putting up the tent and taking down the tent, that, amount, that, that effort or that time is beneficial because the quality of sleep is gonna be that much better than those teams who elect to stay in the transition building and suffer accordingly. So, um, ideally, I would say everything being equal, it's probably a good idea to sleep outside transition completely, somewhere on the stage, especially late at night, who knows. So, I would say sleeping away from transition is probably the best idea, generally, but you don't always have the choice. Don't sit down in transition. Now, that's not a hard and fast rule. Obviously, let's say you're taking care of your feet, maybe assembling your bike, you might need to sit down to, to do things like that. But by not sitting down, what I mean is don't have the mentality of taking a break and putting your feet up when you get into transition. A transition is a time to move, just like it was during the stages themselves. So get in, get your stuff done as fast as possible and get out. Don't take it as an opportunity to put your feet up, take a break, relax. Uh, and by avoiding sitting down, you'll be you have the mentality of keep moving, keep moving, the clock is ticking, and that'll pay off dividends for sure. Almost in the same sentence, a transition is not a break. And I think that's one of the biggest differences between slow teams and fast teams. Fast teams know you shouldn't waste time in a transition. Slow teams, they've finished that previous stage, again, shattered, exhausted, pain, muscle ache. They get a transition, oh, and not only do they sit down, they start chatting and procrastinating and dithering, especially let's say it's raining, oh, I don't want to go outside, um, I don't want to go back into the suffering, uh, instead of getting on with the race as fast as possible. The clock hasn't stopped, so be like a triathlete in how quickly you process through that transition. Okay, and the next one again is fairly closely tied to that. We have a policy in the teams that I've raced in, you're not allowed to give up in transition. Because it's so tempting, you know, when you finish a stage that's been mentally draining, exhausting, fatiguing, 
you know, sometimes you, ah, I just want to stop. I don't want this to continue. I, I, the suffering is too much. So you get into transition and suddenly everything's warm and comfortable and uh, cozy. You say, I've had it. I'm throwing the towel. It's the absolute worst time to throw in the towel. Now, for those of you who've not done an expedition race, uh, you know, your muscles become fatigued with a specific discipline. Let's say I've been trekking for the last 10 hours or 24 hours. You know, your feet are trashed and everything's just aching. If I then get onto a kayak stage, and the kayak stage is going to be another 12 hours or whatever, that means 12 hours I'm not going to be on my feet anymore, which will give my feet time to recover. So, and also it's a, it's a massive uh, kind of rebirth almost, a rejuvenated experience when you get onto a new discipline because suddenly you're doing something new. So our policy is always, unless there's serious injury, you're not allowed to give up in transition. Um, you have to start the next stage. And then when you're on that stage, it's very unlikely that you'll want to go all the way back to give up. You can if you, if you really, really have to. But by getting onto that new stage, you'll feel energized and a whole new day, the dawn has arrived and off you go and suddenly you continue the race. So avoid giving up in transition. And then finally, I'm just going to mention uh, the two things you absolutely need to do in transition. Before you leave, check two things. Especially on an expedition race, every team will have a GPS tracker. Very hard to find a race that doesn't have them anymore. Check that you have the tracker. And don't, have you got the tracker? Check it. Make sure you can see it. Make sure somebody sees it, somebody touches it. I, I know the tracker's there. And the other thing is, uh, with a lot of races, as you know, you probably have an electronic dibber. Or if you don't, you have some sort of race passport where you, you know, write down that you've been to the checkpoint. Make sure that you see that race passport. So before you leave transition, check you've got those two vital bits of kit. Because if you don't, you will be penalized, potentially even disqualified. Uh, I think it was the 2011 Adventure Racing World Championships in Tasmania. Uh, the lead team early on day one forgot their uh, tracker but on a short stage. I think it was from the caving after they left a series of caves. They forgot their tracker when they came out and got out of the rope kit. And typically, on an expedition race, if you penalized, you serve that penalty in terms of time, and you serve it at the last transition of the race, just before the finish. So we saw this world-class team, I think it was Seagate, on the very first day, make a silly error like that, which you wouldn't expect from the best team in the world. On the very last TA, they had to sit. They were leading. They were comfortable lead. They had to sit down and serve out a penalty, four hours plus. And the second place team, they had to watch the second place team come in, change and leave ahead of them and that second place team ended up winning the world championship so the very best teams in the world make silly mistakes you know that kind of mistake and it can make all the difference between in this case first and second place in the world championships all right so just to give you a summary of, of all the stuff we've been through you know by by really working on your transitions you can for example spend on an expedition race you could be in and out of transition in 15, 20 minutes, no matter the discipline. And that's the kind of time that a team like Seagate manages to pull off every time they hit transition, or Avaya, as they're now called. Okay, whereas in the same transition, you'll see middle place and rear place teams coming in, not 15, 20 minutes, they're spending three, four hours in exactly the same transition, accomplishing the same task. And then that is what makes all the difference. At the end of the race, the lead teams have finished Day four, the tail end teams are finishing on day six. Literally 48 hours separating those teams. And where's the time being lost? Aside from navigational issues, right? Primarily lost in transition. Practice, practice, practice. Get in and out as fast as possible and it will make a huge difference and you can leapfrog ahead of other teams. And this is very anecdotal, but just to give an example, early in my adventure racing, uh, we were doing a five, six hour race, short race, very short race, and it was with one other teammate and we were transitioning from a, a trekking stage onto a kayak stage, so we had to replenish the water, and replenish the food, very hot day, but we were organized, and so we got in and out of transition in 45 seconds. So I still remember that, right, many years ago. So, uh, you know, compared to those, teammate, uh, those teams who were spending five or 10 minutes in the same transition. All right, transitions, essential, essential, essential skill, be efficient at them, and Hopefully this episode has been useful. And just to mention, this was another one of those topics that came up on a YouTube comment. I was planning to look at them anyway, but just as an example again, um, you know, the more feedback you give me, the more I can take that. And if lots of people are asking for a topic, I will take it and turn it into an episode.
Alrighty. Okay, thanks very much. See you on the next one.